All right. So this is where we were last time. We were trying to evaluate this integral, which is not too difficult to fix now. So let's continue here. See what happens to the first integral. That's basically half of v to the minus half minus z by two. So this would be v to the half minus z by two divided by half minus z by two. 1 to infinity right similarly what happens to the second integral something similar half v to the minus z by 2 1 to infinity and then here we get 1 to infinity this of course we don't integrate we'll just write it as So, this is just a slight rewrite of the same thing and uh, now if we look at the actual values here, what do we get? Well, here of course, we while evaluating this integral we have to assume that uh, for example, real part of z is bigger than 1, because otherwise if real part of z is less than 1, then when you set v to infinity, it diverges, which you do not want. So, under the assumption that real part of z is bigger than 1, when you set v to infinity, this is 0. When you set v to 1, then what do you, what you get is 1 over z minus 1. Fine. Similarly, here we need to assume that real part of z is bigger than 1, or oh sorry, bigger than 0, which is anyway fine, because we have already assumed real z is bigger than 1. When v equals infinity, this goes to 0. When v equals 1, then this becomes lots of minuses here. This should be right and plus this integral. And now, let us switch back I guess several of these before. So, this is what the expression for zeta was zeta z pi to the minus z by 2 gamma z by 2 is this integral, which we have split into these two parts. And this is the part that we just managed to rewrite as that long integral this one fine. So, let us just plug that value in here and see what we get. Equals. So, stick that in which is 1 over z minus 1 minus 1 over z, this is actually also equal to 1 over z z minus 1. Then plus this 1 to infinity v to the 1 minus z by 2 w v d v over v and in addition the this part which we have not touched and we'll just copy this part as it is which is uh, again changing the variable name from u to v we get v to the z by 2 wv dv over v okay so this is the result of all this hard work through Fourier analysis and what not, but what we get out of this is something very interesting. See the right hand side, first thing to notice on the right hand side 
is not obvious, but once you realize it becomes obvious is that the right hand side is invariant under the substitution z by 1 minus z. The first term is 1 over z z minus 1, you replace z by 1 minus z, z minus 1 becomes minus z and z becomes 1 minus z. So, that is again same. Okay. What if you do the same thing in this integral v to the 1 minus z of course, become v to the z by 2 nothing no z here which and v to the z by 2 becomes v to the 1 minus z by 2. So, these two integrals just swap with each other. So, this implies that So, if right hand side is invariant of course, the left hand side is also invariant under the substitution and which means What does this show us? Well, we know the definition of zeta z for all z with the real part greater than 0. Real part greater than 1, it is defined by that uh, infinite sum. We did a little bit of uh, playing around with it to define it also between the strip 0 and 1. And now the question that we started with was how do what definition do we give to zeta z when z has negative real component. Well, now stick a negative real component to z what do we get say zeta of minus half well okay, pi to the minus. So, let us say z is a, okay, let us just take an example. Suppose z is minus half plus i t, some complex number with real part minus half, then zeta of minus half plus i t pi to the minus minus half plus i t divided by 2 gamma. this equals zeta of 1 minus z, 1 minus z is what half minus i t. Now, this is well defined pi to the whatever power is well defined, gamma of minus quarter plus i t by 2 is well defined. In fact, gamma is well defined on any non integral negative number. So, this is well defined, um, gamma of half minus i t is well defined, pi to the this minus is well defined and gamma again gamma of quarter minus half i t by 2 is um, well defined. So, that gives me a definition of or a value to gamma minus half plus i t. So, in fact, if you just think about it for a moment, this is 0 and you take the line let us say this is 1, this is half.
this relationship which I just derived, this relationship can be used to define the value of zeta at any point here, using the value of zeta at this point, which is just a reflection around the line z equals plus half, real z equals plus half. Right, because gamma z or sorry zeta z is defined in terms of zeta 1 minus z, so which is a that is a symmetric uh, quantity with respect to z equals half line. And since we know what the value of zeta is on this domain, we just extend the same thing to get the value of zeta on this domain. So that's 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 it. I mean, it's although this relationship, if you think back, that this integral we said when they evaluating this integral and sending this to zero, a real z must be greater than one, which means that this relationship holds for real z greater than one. Okay. So there is a question here why when this relationship only holds for real z greater than 1, how can we conclude this equation that is because analytic continuity. Look at the right hand side, it is easy to see that this is defined everywhere the right hand side except for two points at z equals 0 there is a pole, at z equals 1 there is a pole because of this. Right, so this gives poles at z equals zero and one. At all other points, this term is defined. What about the integrals? See, if you recall the definition of W v, W v was some n going from 1 to infinity e to the minus pi n square v. Okay, so, you this infinite sum converges for every v and in fact, it is easy to see that this infinite sum is going to decay very fast it is something like e to the minus v at least as badly as e to the minus v or so because every single term there is e to the minus first term is e to the minus v second term is e to the minus 4 v e to the minus 9 v e to the minus 16 v. When you add all of them up you probably do not get anything better than maybe e to the minus 2 v actually you will get something even less. So, this decays really fast sorry not e to the minus 2 v e to the minus v by 2. So, this decays really fast and this is a only a polynomial in V. The key difference from the earlier case was that when the integral is from 0 to infinity and z real z is bigger than 1 here for example, this becomes 1 over V to the some positive power and when V is 0 this diverges, but this integral now is from 1 to infinity. So, we this part never diverges, this behaves at most a polynomial either as in, in the numerator a polynomial or in the denominator a polynomial in V, which does not matter. I mean this is decays so fast that this will converge for every value of z. Similarly, for every value of z this also converges. So, these both converge on all z. Okay, is it clear? So these two converge on all z. These two are converge on all z except for two poles at zero and one. So right hand side is uh, defined for is basically a meromorphic function x with two poles at zero and one. And it right hand side agrees with the left hand side on the half plane real z greater than one. Therefore, 
by an analytic continuity and its uniqueness, we can analytically continue the left hand side and make it equal to the right hand side on the entire complex grain, which allows me to extend the definition of zeta z all over, because I know pi to the z minus z by 2 and gamma z by 2 are defined everywhere except for some poles. So, this equation itself guarantees that zeta z exists on all plane, all points except for some few poles which we will see in a moment. And then we can use this relationship to derive this relationship between zeta z and zeta 1 minus z, which gives us a nice way of calculating zeta z on the negative side using zeta values on the positive side. Okay. Therefore, have this called the functional equation. for zeta and this is as I already said and this is a very important equation which will allow us to talk about zeta values in different contexts and we will keep coming back to this equation. It also very nicely relates zeta function with the gamma function. Okay. Now, coming back to this uh, well the same equation or in fact, if you go back to the previous one which I should I will write as this and I already observed that this has exactly two poles at z equals 0 and z equals 1. So, let us using this let us find out all the poles of the zeta function over the entire complex plane, because this allows me a different definition of zeta function over the entire complex plane. We already know zeta z has a pole at z equals 1. And in fact, that is a simple pole, pole of order 1, and on the right hand side also we see a pole of order 1 here at z equals 1. So, this seems to be fine. We all know that gamma z by 2, that is gamma half, does not have a pole, is not does not diverge, so it is all everything is perfectly fine. What about z equals 0? The right hand side is a pole at z equals 0. Does zeta have a pole at z equals 0? Zeta 0 should be zeta 1. Why? No, that is only for gamma function. Yeah, exactly. See, gamma has a simple pole at z equals 0, and that matches with the simple pole on the right hand side. Therefore, zeta does not have a pole at z equals 0. In fact, it can not even have a 0 at z equals 0, because if it had a 0 at z equals 0, that will cancel out the pole at of gamma on the left hand side and therefore, you will not have a pole on the right hand side. Okay. So, so this some of the conclusions from this are zeta z does not have a 0 or a pole at 0. Let us move back. These are the two poles on the right hand side which cause the poles, poles are zero on the left hand side, right? The poles actually on the left hand side. The right hand side has no other poles. 
So, which means whatever pole zeta has, if at all it has, they must cancel out with zeros of gamma. But does gamma have a zero anywhere on the negative complex plane? In fact, if you recall that functional equation for gamma, gamma z is equal to gamma 1 plus z over z, right. So, if gamma z is 0, then gamma 1 plus z must also be 0, which means gamma 1 2 plus z must be 0, 3 plus z. So, that all points must be 0 all the way up, but at some point the real part of k plus z will become positive and then we know that gamma of that quantity is not 0. Okay. So, that actually say tells us that the gamma function is never 0 on the entire plane. So, if gamma function is never 0 on the entire plane it surely is not 0 on the negative complex plane and therefore, zeta has no poles on the negative complex. So, which means the zeta has exactly one pole at z equals 1. Okay. Well, we can observe something more also here, because gamma has some poles on the negative side. In fact, at all uh, negative all negative integers it has a pole right. It also has a pole at 0 you are right it has, has a pole at 0, but that is fine that pole already is taken care of, but it has a pole at minus 1 minus 2 minus 3, which means to get that pole in this equation we have to set z equals minus 2 minus 4 minus 6. So, every negative even integer will cause a pole on the left hand side. But right hand side has no poles at those points, which means zeta must have a 0 at those points to cancel out those poles. And the order what is the order of those poles of gamma? Say what is the order of pole of gamma at minus 1? Its order is 1. In fact, all of these poles have order 1 because it is see gamma minus 1 is gamma 0 over minus 1. So, it is inherit inherits the order of the pole at gamma 0 and every subsequent one in it. So, all these poles of gamma are of order 1 therefore, zeta must have a 0 at every negative even integer and these zeros must be of order 1. So, a simple 0 is same as this 0 of order 1. Okay. Minus? Oh, because there is z by 2 here. Okay. Is there any other 0 of zeta function? on the let us say negative complex plane. use what? Yes, so use the functional equation there. If there is a 0 on the say at z, 
which is on somewhere on the negative complex plane. Then there will be a zero corresponding now gamma at this those points is non zero whether gamma z by 2 or gamma 1 minus z by 2 because we know gamma has no no zeros and no poles also except for 0 minus 1 minus 2 which we have already taken care of at all other points at any other point if zeta z has a 0 then zeta 1 minus z also is 0. If that is negative so that means if there is minus 1 here then this will become zeta 2 that 0 2 is 0 can 0 2 be 0 no it is actually pi square by 6. In fact zeta z for any value of z with real part greater than 1 will not be a 0 because again that it is a convergent series and numbers is get added up except well there are amplitudes complex amplitudes which can subtract also, but the series sum one can argue a bit to see that it is never 0 on the side of real z greater than 1, which in turn means that it will have no 0 when real z is less than 0 is symmetric, symmetric around real z equals half. So, if there is no 0 on real z greater than 1, there is no 0 on real z less than 0. In fact, let me give that as an assignment. So, by the symmetry um, well symmetry of values certainly holds for the zeros. If zeta z is half then zeta 1 minus z need not be half, but if zeta z is 0 then zeta 1 minus z must be 0 because of the, the way the equations are set up. So, therefore, since there is no 0 here 0 free region let us say that this is also 0 free region. Except of course, these minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8 and so on, where the zeros are caused by the gamma function. So, apart from this uh, zeros of zeta function at minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, minus 8, all other zeros if at all they exist must be in this region. because gamma has a pole at those points. So, 0 and pole cancel each other out on the left one side and the other side nothing happens. Okay. So, the remaining zeros are in this trip between 0 and 1 and this is called critical strip. of zeta function, because the behavior of zeta function in this strip is something that we would like to understand why I will explain very soon, but that is that is where we have some very interesting behavior of zeta function. Okay. 
these zeros which are at negative even integers these are called trivial zeros of zero function trivial because these are basically caused by poles of gamma function and they are not really of much interest to us well they are of interest but they don't really uh, change the things in a any significant way as we will see later. Okay. So, with all of this we have at least achieved our one of the targets which was to define zeta function over the entire complex plane. So, that we can take a contour now, I do not know if you remember the origin of all of this. We had psi x equals 1 over 2 pi i integral c minus i r to c plus i r zeta prime z over zeta z uh, x to the z by z d z plus order x log square x by r. Right. And this is how we started and we said okay, let us evaluate this integral, this is the error term. To evaluate this integral, we use this familiar technique of defining a domain and using the residue theorem uh, Cauchy's integral formula essentially, but in order to use that one thing that became clear is that we cannot go on the right side, because if we go on the right side since x is bigger than 1 x to the z will diverge and we will not be able to bound the integral on this side. So, we have to come on the left hand side. And look at this region right. And C was if you recall 1 plus 1 by log x just a little more than 1. Now, to in order to do this domain integral, we needed the definition of zeta function in this domain, which we have now managed to achieve. Once zeta is defined in this domain and zeta is analytic also, by just analytic continuation makes sure that zeta is analytic everywhere except for the pole at z equals 1. And so, zeta prime z is perfectly well defined everywhere. So, this function is defined well defined and we can now go ahead and do the integral. Now, in order to do the integral we will, will of course, invoke this theorem of Cauchy, the Cauchy integral formula that integration along the boundary of a domain equals the or the residue theorem which equals the sum of the residues at all the poles. right inside the domain. So, what are the residues of this function this is this whole function that we have what are its residues in this region or forget the residues poles let us forget let us for find out poles in this region. 
one th one pole is very clear z equals 0 this pole right here but that and that takes care of this guy no other pole because of this the remaining poles are because of zeta prime over zeta what poles are caused by zeta prime over zeta will it have, will it have a pole at z equals 1 zeta has a pole but it's 1 over zeta prime over zeta Okay, think about this. See, zeta has a pole at z equals one. It's a simple pole. So, if you look at the Lorentz series expansion around z equals one for zeta, you will get something like one over z minus one plus higher degree term. You differentiate this. What do you get? You get minus one over z minus one whole square plus plus uh, higher degree terms. In fact, the higher degree terms will only be constant and higher. There is will be no term like one over z, one over z minus. And then you look at zeta prime over zeta. So you in the numerator you have one over one z minus one whole square. In the denominator you have one over one minus z plus higher degree term. You multiply both by one minus z. So the denominator becomes a polynomial or a power series. Numerator still has one over z minus one plus a power series. Now at z equals one, what happens? Pole, same order pole, order one pole. At z equals zero. One upon z is not there. Zeta, zeta is not zero or doesn't have a pole or a zero at z equals zero. In fact, this character zeta prime zeta is a pretty bad character because whenever there is a pole of zeta or there is a zero of zeta, this becomes a pole. One simple way of seeing this is that zeta prime over zeta is what? No, no, it does. So, okay, let's look at. So, it's very. Forget about zeta. Take any function. Okay. Just consider let us say some function f z with pole of order k at 0. So, let us will just assume it has a pole at 0. So, this means f z is 1 over z to the k not 1, but it is some constant c c over z to the k plus higher degree term. What is derivative of f? It is minus c k over z to the k plus 1 plus high degree terms. So, f prime z over f is minus c k over z to the k plus 1 plus high degree term c over z to the k plus high degree term. Multiply and divide by z to the k we get minus c k by z plus high degree term c plus high degree term. Now, this at z equals 0 is a pole, but is a pole of order 1. What is the residue of this pole?
residue is calculated by multiplying it with z and taking the limit as z goes to 0. You multiply the whole thing by z, take the limit as z goes to 0, you get minus c k over c. So, you get residue minus k. Okay. Now, let us instead suppose f k has a 0 of order k, then you can write f k as oh sorry f z sorry f z as z to the k some c times z to the k plus i degree terms. So, what happens to f prime z c k z to the k minus 1 plus i degree term. So, what happens to f prime over f c k z to the k minus 1 plus i degree term over c z to the k minus k plus i degree term. Z to the k minus 1 can be cancelled out from numerator and denominator. You get c k plus i degree term over c z plus i degree term. So, this has a pole at z equals 0 of order 1. And what is the residue? So, f prime over f for any function f has this very nice or strange property if you will that whenever f has a 0 or a pole f prime over f has a pole of order 1 and the residue is precisely the order of the 0 or pole where the order of pole is taken in the negative sense. Okay. So, that is the knowledge we have. Now, coming back to zeta prime over zeta, which is one instantiation of f prime over f, we have to now worry about every single pole and 0 of zeta function. So, well surely we know that here is a pole at z equals 1. So, that is going to be a pole of zeta prime over zeta, but not only that minus 2 m minus 4 m minus minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, these are all zeros of zeta function therefore, poles of zeta prime over zeta, but not only that all the zeros wherever they are in this critical strip and we have no idea how many of where they are and how many of them are, they are also poles of this. So, in order to be able to estimate what this integral is, we will need to do a lot of work now. This part is easy minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 very clean. We know it is a we know the residue, residue is because these are poles no, these are zeros of order 1 therefore, residue at each one of them is 1 simple. This is again 1 also we know it is a pole of of order 1. So, therefore, residue is minus 1. These are the characters which we really need to understand these zeros here. We need to get a handle on where they are, how many of them are there. So, that we can calculate the uh, residues the right number of residues appropriately. The residues we can only we can calculate easily by just knowing how many of them are there. But there is another, there is a reason why we need to know exactly where these guys are also, and the reason is the following: that as you take the integral, see that strategy is going to be that we take this contour integral anti-clockwise, and we will argue that these integrals are very small, and therefore can be absorbed in the error term. 
and so this contour integral is roughly same as the integral this one this integral and therefore, we get psi x. Now, to argue that these contour integrals are very small or this, this path integrals are very small, we will have to be careful as we move along say from here to here, we may be coming close to a 0 of zeta function that is where it will be, because here we know exactly where where are the zeros, so we can avoid them by going far away from them. And also when we come down of course, we cannot avoid them by too much, but we can certainly split them right in the middle. So, distance one this side distance one this side, so reasonably far apart, but here we have to have some control over uh, taking this path. Otherwise, if this comes too close to a 0 what happens? This person diverges or it becomes very, very large as we move the integral it becomes large and then we cannot argue that the integral along this line is small. So, that is why it is important to know the locations of these zeros also, so that we can avoid the zeros as we move from right to left. So, we need to know the numbers, we need to know the locations and then we can say something useful hopefully about the contour integral and therefore, we can conclude something useful about the psi function. So, that is the task ahead of us any questions. So, zeta prime over zeta has a pole at that point. So, as if you this path goes very close to a pole or a 0 of zeta function which is the pole of zeta prime over zeta, then the integral will shoot up very close. Yeah. So, we have to define what very close is it becomes so essentially we want to avoid a situation where when this function takes a very high value along some point on the path integral path right other if it takes a very high value then of course, we cannot argue that it the whole integral is small. So, that is a situation we have to avoid. So, we cannot just blindly take a you no know, pick a point here and just move to the left we might even be hitting a pole if you as you move along but we, and then the whole integral is undefined. Okay, so, that is as I said is the task ahead of us and uh, we are now it sort of tells us that we have to analyze this distribution of zeros in order to get a handle, but let us assume wherever those zeros are. So, let us say uh, we can at least write down this suppose So, let us use a symbol rho, which I will uniformly use to represent zeros of zeta function in that critical strip. Okay. So, then what is this contour integral? If you, if you recall that this is a domain D.
Oh, there is a negative sign also somewhere, right? This there is a negative sign here. What is the value of this integral? By residue calculus, it equals the sum of the residues at all the poles. So, what are the poles here? Poles are of course, at 1. Order of? Order of zeros. I am not sure, I think we can say something, but that is not very important for us anyway, because zeta prime or zeta will always have a order 1 pole, only the value of the residue will change, value of residue will change yes you are right. But what we can say is we just let rho run over all zeros. if the order is k then let we can sort of pretend that they are k 0 sitting at the same point. So, as the rho runs over all zeros, it runs over k times over that. Okay, so, this equals the sum of residues at all the poles. So, first let us take care of the poles that we know well. What is the residue as the pole when z equals 1. Uh, zeta prime over zeta takes the value minus 1, right. So, minus zeta prime over zeta will take the value plus 1 and, but notice that the residue is of the whole function, not only this, right. It is this entire function we are considering and its poles. So, what is the residue of this? at z equals 1 x. Then moving back z equals 0 is pole of this. Now, the residue of this therefore, is minus 1 because of this being a pole and this will therefore, then be zeta prime 0 over zeta 0, that is the residue. Then moving further back at minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, what is going to be the residue? This will give always where? Yeah, minus why would there be a minus? The pole is pole will give a residue of minus 1. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, you are right, this is reducing minus 1. Okay. Now, going back to minus 2, for example, minus 2 is a 0 of zeta. So, its residue will be plus 1 zeta prime over zeta and since there is a minus here there will be a minus 1 here and this would be minus x square by 2 minus x to the 4 by 4 and so on. So, these are the residues corresponding to the zeros at the trivial zeros and then there would be residues corresponding to non trivial zeros within the critical strip and what about there so there will be zero so it's residue will be plus 1 it's minus 1 here and this would be x to the rho over rho okay. 
So, let us just write this as And there will be a minus here. That's right. Thanks. So, that is the formula we get, we will do it next time.